Madam Munchy. If you're wondering what the difference between a macaroon and a macaron is, well, Kim and Ashley will uh, set your mind free. Had a chance to sit down with them in uh, downtown San Francisco on Diviz. That's the Divisadero. All right, so we are, we, how would you say it? We're not in headquarters. But but we're with Kim and we're with Ashley, right? Uh, yeah, living quarters maybe. Oh, okay. This is where you live. That makes sense, right? Yeah. yeah. And then I I just I want to bring out because you gave me a gift, which is your beautiful beautiful product, and uh, it's the Madame Munchie Artisanal Cannabis Macaroons. I say macaroons, but I know that it is written macarons. Uh, yeah, in French you could say macaron. <laughs> ah, because you spent some time in France. We're going to get into that in a minute. And uh, what is the, because we talked about this earlier, the difference between macaroon and macaron? Well, if you're saying macaroon with two O's, actually, that's usually a coconut meringue-based cookie, so it's a little different. It's just one half. A French macaron is actually two halves, and it's made with almond meal. And then there's filling on the inside to join them together. So that's what a macaron would be. Right. And now everybody listening realizes that the word macaroon that they've been using all their lives <laughs> is wrong. <laughs> so, so thank you for that, if, if nothing else. <laughs> Just pronunciation issue. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Okay. So, so uh, Kim and Ashley. So let's just get through. You know uh, how this whole thing uh, came to be because I know you have a finance background. You have a grow background, right? So let's start with that, right? Because that's where let's go from seed to sale, if 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 we can, right? Yeah. Well, um, I got into this industry over seven years ago, um, working with my family who has been growing cannabis for over thirty years and just interested in taking their business to the next level. And how many generations is that? Uh, two, like one and a half, basically. <laughs> okay. So you are the half, is what well, you're saying? My, it's actually my, uh, my uncle's farm. So uh, him, second yeah, second generation, but him and his son now. So yeah, two generations. Got it. And it's in the Emerald Triangle, I would yes. imagine. All right. Yeah. And uh, all right, so you now have this uh, crazy, uh, crazy baking uh, company. Um, is that what you call it? What do you? How do you refer to it? Or is it just edibles or edible collective? Yeah, bakery whole, manufacturer, wholesale bakery. Okay, wholesale bakery. That sounds so plain. <laughs> <laughs> that so, sounds so regular business. Yeah. As it should be. <laughs> so I, what? What uh, is 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 very obvious right off the bat is how beautiful your product is. And then uh, if you get the chance to see the packaging, how beautiful the packaging is. And the website is just as beautiful. It is its own package. Uh, so I know that you take that seriously. I know that you take the terminology seriously. I know that you take the flower seriously. What You take everything seriously, but what, what is the, the kind of the, uh, the priority? What, what's first, what's second, what's third? Um, I mean, I think first is making something that the patients are really going to enjoy uh, that's both delicious and effective. Uh, a lot of our patients have a lot of chronic pain or just different issues they're trying to address, and we want it to work. So we take the dosage and the consistency of our dosage very seriously. We get all of our batches of butter lab tested, and we weigh everything out to the you know 0.1 gram to make sure that the consistency stays throughout the product, which I think can be very tricky with edibles. Right, and with the uh, macaron that uh, we have in front of us, you said basically one to five milligrams per quarter, basically? <clears throat> yes, so a full macaron has 20 milligrams of THC, so a quarter would have about five milligrams. Okay, which is uh, good for the rookies. Okay, fantastic. So, so that's kind of the etymology of that. We understand that Ashley's background is from the grow side. And then what, so you have a finance background, you were in France. What the heck is going on here, Kim? <laughs> um, yeah, I have a finance background. Uh, I studied um, in France where I grew up uh, and lived for about 17 years. Um, I think that's kind of obviously partially where the inspiration for the French macaron comes from and also for the dedication to quality because I think overall they take that very seriously, especially when it comes to food. Um, and the finance background comes very in handy with all the business aspects of you know, 
producing something for patients. And um, I think I also have sort of a creative background uh, that I tried to perfect during my summers of studying art and just pursuing that. So um, really this uh, business was the perfect opportunity to bring them together, serving the same purpose. Yeah, and um, here's the issue with you being the person that actually came up with the logo, it created the logo, is that you have the finance background, and finance people are not supposed to be creative. <laughs> so we have, to, we have to dive in here a little bit more. Tell us about your folks, like how do you have both sides? Uh, well, I mean, I think finance can actually be very creative. But... As, as we know from Enron. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh... <laughs> I got you there. <laughs> um, I think um, I was always interested in studying something that had um, real life skill aspect to it. With finance, I saw that opportunity, um, but I have used to consider myself living a kind of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde lifestyle, mm. as in going to finance, working in a suit every day, and going home and smoking a joint every night. And people not knowing the two, you know, <laughs> different aspects of that. And um, I almost felt like it was a personal mission to prove to people that you can actually be all of those things and as diverse as you want to be, and it's okay. Um, and I think finance is also just, in a way, the, the background of the theater, you know? It's what makes all the pieces move and into place. So I knew if I could have that power of understanding those pieces, that could help me for whatever purpose I wanted to use it for. Um, but definitely my parents have, you know, strong business backgrounds and probably pushed me in that direction as well. Uh, while my grandfather and other parts of the family have a very artistic background, there's actually a painter, a cartoon writer, and a political cartoonist um, in my family as well. So they Get out! Any uh, with a political cartoonist, do we know the name maybe? Well, uh, so that was my grandfather, so um, um, Gene Bassett was his name. Uh, not working anymore, but his son, Brian Bassett, actually draws um, cartoons for the Seattle newspaper. One of them is Red and Rover, so people in Seattle might know about that. There we go. <laughs> and we'll maybe try to kind of put one up with this episode so people can see it. Yeah, that'd be great, yeah. And then if not, you can use Google, which I understand we're supposed to call Alphabet from now on, now that we're here in San Francisco. Have you not heard that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, what's going on with that? Some new holding structure. I haven't really read much about it yet. I mean, but you're the finance person. We need to know, Kim. <laughs> I'll look into call, that. Yeah. Call, yeah. Uh, Google, Google God, you know? Yeah. So if you have a question for God, like, go ahead, type it in. Type it in. There you go. All right. So, so you know, we've got this beautiful packaging. We've got this beautiful logo. We've got these beautiful cookies, uh, excuse me, uh, product. And um, you also are uh, fairly, uh, you know, um, successful in terms of getting into dispensaries. You mentioned that you're in 40 dispensaries. Yeah, uh, we just try and grow, you know, a little bit more every day and uh, satisfy our customers. So, you know, from uh, Northern California to to Southern California, just keep getting the product. Yeah, that's it. Okay, fantastic. And then, um, as far as uh, you know, um, servicing those clients, what what do you hear most? You know, you, you set out to uh, put together a product that uh, patients appreciate and it works for them. What do you hear from patients? What do you hear from dispensaries? Well, uh, it kind of depends on the type of dispensary. I think you hear a lot of different things. Um, there's a huge population out there that are cannabis users. So obviously there's going to be lots of different types. But we find in the more high-end dispensaries that are trying to serve a new clientele, which is only just now becoming comfortable with cannabis and with going to these stores, there tends to be more feedback around the fact that they like the mild dosage, which is something um, that's you know important about our product. It is, even though 20 milligrams is actually a good dose for a regular user, it's still considered on the mild dosage compared to other edibles. So we hear that feedback and uh, patients love the taste. Mm -hmm. um, but there are some dispensaries, you know, that are also looking for higher dose edibles because some patients who have been regulars for years already and live with, you know, very high levels of pain need those higher dosages. So you, you can't always make everyone happy and, uh, you know, we chose our battle. But uh, <laughs> Right. All right. And so, so that's kind of what you're hearing. What about generalization? So understanding that each uh, patient is his or her own person or their own person. Uh, what is, you know, do you have an overlay of NorCal kind of says this, SoCal kind of says that? Do you have that or? 
I don't think not not really. Um, we get a a lot of good comments from both. Like everybody uh, really enjoys the packaging and just a, a new image for the cannabis industry. It's not just you know in a brown baggie or you know cellophane. It's you know very nicely presented. Yeah, it uh, it really does. It looks beautiful. It looks like it could be in Whole Foods uh, or or Trader Joe's. Yeah, someday maybe. <laughs> yeah, but probably more Whole Foods, to be honest. You know. Why not both? <laughs> right. Well, why not both? That's exactly right. So, where you know that's where uh, you said hopefully someday. A couple questions on kind of future speak here. Um, although, as a finance person, I don't know how comfortable you are with forward-looking statements. Uh, <laughs> But, uh, but you know, um, where we are now is, you know, uh, trying to get a whole uh, state uh, together on medical before we get a whole state together on adult use. From your guys' perspective, you know, where, where are you with that? What do you, what do you think is happening? Uh, well, yeah, as you said, both are happening. So medical on one hand, recreational on the other. People are pushing for both. Right. And I think they both deserve to exist. Um, I think medical has been a great way so far to bring this product to more people and there's definitely medical instances where this product can be incredibly helpful both to get off traditional pharmaceutical drugs which can have really bad secondary effects sometimes um, or just to you know as a another option on top of other treatment just to alleviate pain or help you know with the appetite and keeping food down and things like that Mm. but personally I mean I think we both believe that There's also a recreational use that deserves to be approved. Um, Everyone will tell you it's just like a glass of wine, and I think it's actually even less harmful than a glass of wine at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So um, hopefully they're able to pass both of those bills and, um, you know, get a bit more of a regulated system going on. And I think it'll definitely take time. And I think it's also up to us to show that we can be responsible actors within this industry and this community and build it in a safe way. You know, we're not trying to sell this to kids. We have no interest in doing anything like that. So all that structure hopefully is going to come with these new measures. Right. And you guys are kind of like looking for those regulations, give them to us and we will abide by them. Seems like what your point of view is. (laughs) Yeah. We would love nothing more than that. I mean, just tell us what license, tell us what permit, you know, and we'll go get that because we want to build a transparent industry. Same way that when you go and buy cannabis or I mean, I don't know in New York what people might do, but well, no one buys cannabis in New York yet because no. it's not legal. Obviously, that does not exist there. No right. one smokes it in New York either, of course. Right. Um, but you, you know, like you were asking before, what different patients need, what different feedback you get. You can't even start billing that for yourself as a patient until you actually know what you're even getting. So if someone just tells you, oh, this is an indica, this is a sativa, this is a hybrid, but you can't really be sure what it's going to be every time, what the THC content is, if it's re- reliably grown and all that, you can't even start building that for yourself. So we would like to make that possible as part of this community. Indeed, indeed. And that is what's happening uh, in in other states, uh, slowly but surely, I guess. So, you know, what what else do we need to know about my, Madam Munchie? You know, what, what haven't we covered? Uh, you guys take the product so seriously. You take the presentation very seriously. You take the patient seriously. You take your partnerships with dispensaries seriously. Um, it does seem like, uh, you know, a, a passion. Uh, what else do we need to know, if, uh, if anything? Or do, do we have it, do you think? Um, well, just to recap a little bit, uh, just getting um, clean medicine to patients who need it and all the information, you know, education, awareness, you know, what is the correct dose for a first time user? You know, most people don't know that it's only, you know, one to five milligrams for a first time user. So mm. yeah, just, you know, want everyone to have a safe, good experience and enjoy it. Yeah, Indeed. everyone's had that edible experience that didn't go so well and we're just trying to make sure that's not gonna happen for people who are new to this industry in the future. Yeah, indeed, start low and go slow. Yeah, you can always eat more later. (laughs) That's it, that's exactly it. Um, All right, so we do have uh, final three questions. Uh, And we ask everybody uh, these questions. I think I did uh, mention that this might be the first time that I'm interviewing two people at the same time. So here's what I wanna do. The three questions are, what has most surprised you in cannabis? What has most surprised you in life? And finally, and uh, this one's most difficult to, uh, to most people, on the soundtrack of your life, can you name one track, please? 
And so I think what we're going to do is, what does most surprise you in cannabis? We're going to go with the, uh, you know, the the uh, the grower, uh, you know, the child of uh, of, of uh, the emerald uh, triangle. Um, then we'll go to what has most surprised you in life because you've been to France and in finance. And then uh, we'll ask both of you uh, for a track. So how about we do that? What has most surprised you in cannabis? Understanding that you've, you know, you've known for your entire life, uh, you know, the flower. Um, uh, I'm not really sure how to answer that. Uh, I guess the most surprising thing is just how big the industry actually is. And, you know, it's, it's, it's huge in California, you know, everywhere you go, it's just people growing it, you know, you know, doing everything with it. So I guess that's the most surprising thing that it's so regularly used and it's still illegal. So regularly used, so illegal, at least in California, but not really. Yeah. Me medicinally, it's a legal a county by county or city by city or whatever it is. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, no, I, I think that that's what the rest of the industry sees in California is once we can get some actual legislation on the books, look out. Because mm -hmm. uh, the industry here is gigantic. Yeah. So that's uh, your point is well taken. What has most surprised you in life, Kim? Um. <laughs> Right off the bat, I think I'd say um, how free I felt once I decided to actually follow my true passion. And uh, I'm glad I put in some work before taking that giant leap, you know, and getting this or that background or this or that skill together because I want people to take me seriously and I want to be able to talk about what's important to me. But, um, and I think Ashley definitely helped me with this of realizing that you know, you don't want to live your life afraid. If there's something you want to do, you got to do it. The only way people are going to see that that's who you are is by you doing it and showing them that's who you are. And even though every day I feel maybe stressed or anxious or scared at different moments from being in this industry or from having this business, I also every day feel fulfilled and excited and like I'm not missing out on my life. And I think that how just how fulfilling that feeling could be is never ceases to surprise me. I do want to leave a beat there because that was very well said. I did say to you though, in our first conversation that we could really use you on the banking side. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe. <laughs> but I understand you've got to do what you've got to do. You said it perfectly, so we'll leave it alone. All right, so, uh, so, so final question, soundtrack of your life. Can you name at least one track, please? Um, I would say Get Free by Major Lazer, um, just because they're so compassionate, and that's why. Okay. I'm going to have to check that out. I do not know that one. Fair enough. Yeah. Oh, I have to. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're both, you got to do this one. This is the most important one. Uh, well, I don't know why it's the one that's in my mind right now, I guess, but uh, David Bowie, um, Mr. Tom? Or sure, yeah. Tom? No, absolutely. Uh, Ground control ground to Major control. Tom. <laughs> I was listening to that recently in the car, full yeah. volume on, just having a great time. So. <laughs> this is ground control to Major Tom. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I'm, we're going to go listen to that right now. Yeah. Kim, Ashley, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Yeah, Stephen. thanks for chatting with us. All right. For the love of the product, Kim and Ashley, clearly, uh, yet another uh, couple of passionate entrepreneurs in the cannabis space. Uh, check out their product if you can uh, in California. And uh, if you're not in California, check them out online. Enjoy. Enjoy.